I'm Lauren from TastyPC.TV and today I'm doing a review of three mechanical keyboards from Corsair, the Vengeance K65, K70 and K95. So let's get started. So if I start with the Vengeance K70, seeing that's just kind of a good base to work off of, we've got this black anodized brushed aluminium sheet which curves over this bottom plastic base. And I have to say I really love how this keyboard looks, I think that it really likes sleek and minimalistic. But it's got kind of like an industrial look to it as well because all you're really seeing is just like a sheet of shaped metal with some switches on it. And it's just a really unique look that you only find with the Corsair keyboards and I really like it. Um, I should probably mention I've been using this keyboard for quite some time now so it doesn't look quite as new as it otherwise would. Um, but I've got the Cherry Mix Red Switch version which is found with either black with red LEDs like this or a natural silver with blue LEDs. Corsair have also recently released both a Cherimix Blue and a Cherimix Brown Switch version, both of which are available in gunmetal grey with blue LEDs. And even though I do think it's quite cool, you can see tell just by the colour of the metal, whether someone's got one of the newer blue or brown switch versions, or one of the older red switch versions, um, I really wish that I could get it so it looked like this, like black with the red LEDs, but um, with Cherimix Brown switches instead, just because that'd be like my preferred combination. <laughs> Um, one thing I should mention, because there was some confusion in my Ducky Shine 2 review, is that because I live in England, I've got the English keyboard layout, so like the short shift key and the long enter key. Um, if you live in the US and you buy this keyboard, don't worry, you will get your standard like American layout with your long shift key and your short enter, wherever it is, I can't remember. But don't worry about that. Um, so this is a good time to mention that this keyboard has N key rollover, which means you can press all the keys at the same time and they will all register. Um, so over here we've got some BG keys and rather than like a volume up and volume down button we've got this scroll wheel and I really do love this, it both looks and feels really nice, it's got this like really nice texturing but also it just feels so much nicer to use than like volume up and volume down buttons, I do really love this. Um, this button here when you press it not only does it light up but it locks the windows key and then these two here control the LEDs. Um, this one switches between four different brightness settings, the first one um, was completely off and then uh, from that we've got three up and these are really really nice like deep red LEDs that I'm sure the camera is not showing properly at all um, but obviously if you get the natural silver version or the Cherimix blue or the Cherimix brown versions then they've got blue LEDs um, now this button here switches between all of the buttons being lit up and only a select few and you can change them like which ones are lit up just by holding it until the like ring like flashes at you and then you can be like well I never use those so turn those off um, maybe turn that on and then you can save it again just by holding it and it will save on the keyboard's onboard memory um, and then like that's just saved although one thing that I found out that Corsair don't mention anywhere is that if you hit hold down control and press this you get into like a kind of <laughs> sort of reactive lighting mode and I say that because it's kind of like reactive lighting like you've still got like it still works kind of similar but for example you could do like a couple of rows and all of the LEDs would turn off together at the same time rather than how you turn it off it's kind of difficult to explain but like for example and then they, they all turn off together like kind of how you'd expect like the order you press them um so I don't know whether it's like course ever attempted to do reactive lighting and just failed at it or whether it's they're completely by accident which would be cool but I mean, I like it. I mean, I know it doesn't look kind of as good as reactive lighting because if you press load, they all turn off at the same time rather than as you press them. But I do definitely think it's more interesting. And if it is completely by accident, then that is pretty cool. Um, but if I just unplug that. Um, okay, so if I just change it so that you can see the back. Um, we've got, firstly, a... USB pass through which is always handy. We've got a switch here which has got five different settings. The first four change the polling speed from 1ms through to 8ms and the last one not only lowers it but turns off NQ rollover and most of us will just leave it kind of how it is now but some of you will want to change it just to kind of avoid incompatibility issues with older motherboard biases and things like KVM switches. Um, and then obviously we've got this USB cable which is both black and braided which is really nice and that goes into a splitter which goes into two cables. Um, one which powers the keyboard and one for the USB pass through and they've got, I don't know if you can see that, symbols on them there so you can see easily um, from like the back of your computer or whatever which one does what. Um, so then if we look at the bottom of the keyboard, um, so here we've got like four rubber pads which obviously like give you some grip on your desk and then we've also got these four stands to change the keyboard's angle. 
Although because we've got like the the bottom of them is all smooth plastic rather than rubber, so if you've got them all up, you will lose like most of your grip. Um, so these like slots here are for wrist rests, and the the K70 does actually come with one, which is like a really spongy rubber rather than plastic, and I really do like it. It feels much nicer to use than a lot of wrist rests that I've used before, um, and it very easily just clips in um like that now this one here is for a separate ten dollar fps one that corsair sells separately obviously um and that just goes from like the if i get that in thing and that just goes from like the edge of the control to like the middle of the space bar and just means that if you're going to have your hands rested there and your right hand on the mouse it's just going to be more comfy because obviously you don't need it being this long um so if we then look at the kind of keys and switches so firstly we've got this textured space bar which is really nice um both looks and feels nice and then as well with the k70 you do actually get some extra keycaps and i do really love these i think they look so 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 nice and they've got the same kind of texturing as the space bar and they've got um this red bit at the top here um and you've got from one to six and the wasd keys and I do just really love these. They're so nice. They look like whatever keyboard I end up using, even if it's got like blue LEDs or something that doesn't go with red at all, I will still use these. These are just, they're so nice. They probably won't look anything like how they look in real life on camera, but they're just such a nice deep red and it's, they're so nice. Also, it's kind of difficult to explain, but like, I don't know if you can see that, but like the left side of the one goes up to the left and like the right side of the six curves up to the right so from like one to six it kind of like does that <laughs> it's kind of difficult to explain but i do love these these are so pretty like i seriously whatever keyboard i use as long as these are compatible i will be using these um so yeah so like i said my favorite well i don't know if i said it but <laughs> my favorite cherry mix switches are brown so for that reason obviously because i've got the red cherry mix switch version this keyboard isn't necessarily my first choice to type on but that being said i will still very happily game on it um so what i'm going to do in a second is pull off some of the keycaps to take you for a close look at switches using the keycap puller that comes with the k70 but before I do that, I just want to um, allow you to hear the difference between the keys with just switches underneath and the keys with both switches and stabilizers. Um, obviously, remembering that I've got the one with Cherry Mix red switches, and it will sound different if you've got the blue or brown version. So, firstly, completely bottoming out. And then a mixture of um, bottoming out and just hitting the actuation point. And then if I just pull off some of the keycaps, oh, sorry. So firstly, you can see that it's plate mounted and obviously the LED is mounted at the top of the Cherry MX red switch. And if I pull off one of these ones, oh, oh. I'll just go, go for the shift instead. Oh, here you go, here you go. Oh, here you go, we got one. <laughs> Um, we've got cherry stabilizers <laughs> so i think that's it with the k70 so next we have the vengeance k95 and this is a fully mechanical version of the k90 and pretty much just a k70 with a load of macros like no more nails to the end of it and to be honest that is kind of what i think of this keyboard appearance wise um well i don't know i'm kind of torn like on one side i look at this keyboard and i see this really sexy black anodized like brush aluminium and it's like all metal and looking all sleek with this just like plastic bit over to the edge it looks like it's just been like hot glued on and it looks really naff but then on the other side of it you've just got this metal keyboard which is a lot nicer than a lot of plastic keyboards i've seen with this separate kind of like control center bit off to the side which is pretty cool and i think really it just comes down to how you look at it and also the lighting like in some lighting this does look very plastic to the competitors well obviously because that's plastic and that's metal but you know what i mean um whereas in this lighting they like complement each other and it looks quite cool so I, um, it kind of just comes down to how you want to look at it although you know don't get me wrong i'm not talking about the build quality like the build, the build quality of the k95 is really great i'm just talking like purely aesthetically um but this section here is pretty much identical to the k70 apart from these which i'll talk to you about in a minute and the fact that space bar is smooth like even down to the sort of kind of reactive lighting 
Um, this bit is also identical, except the cables, connectors, and splitter um, are blue rather than red. Um, the bottom is different though, so if I just show you that. So we still have four rubber pads, although this time we've only got two stands, but they're still smooth plastic rather than rubber. Um, you can see like the slots here again for a wrist rest because the K95 does come with a wrist rest um, very similar to the K70. On this side it's the same kind of smooth rubber, um, but on this side, once you clip it in, um, you've got these like screws just to kind of allow you to better secure it. Um, But the K95 is only available Cherry MX Red Switches, which are generally not be like the best known for gaming, and this is, you know, very clearly a gaming keyboard. Also, the LEDs are um, white. Now, with this, you do get 18 programmable G keys and three different profiles, meaning in total you can have 54 keys saved on the onboard memory. And also, each of these profiles can have different lighting. So, like for three different games, you could have set macros and certain keys lit up. Um, and you can program these either by using the software you can download from the Corsa website or on the fly using this button here. So if I just plug it in and show you. Okay, so first of all you can see the white LEDs. Um, and this one, it still switches between all of them lit up and a few of them lit up. But this time the few that are lit up are dependent on what profile you're on. Um, but, okay, so firstly... If you want to program one of the G keys, all you've got to do is choose which of the profiles you want to be in. So say for example the one, hold down this until it flashes at you, choose the G key that you want to program, and then just type in whatever you want. So for example, GG, um, then hold it again to save it. And then that's that macro saved. It's really that simple. Um, if you want to then do the lighting, you hold this down again until it starts to flash. And you might be like, I want the G key lit up and the space bar to glow and you save it again just like you did with the K70 um, and then that's it, like on the first profile you've now got those two lit up and like the G1 key programmed and it's really that simple to do so you know it's really easy to set up both the lighting and the G keys for the different profiles on the fly which I think is really cool so then lastly we've got the Vengeance K65 Corsair's newest mechanical keyboard which biggest feature is that it's 10 keyless as it's been made for travel although that's obviously also great if you don't have a lot of space on your desk and even though it is 10 keyless, you've still got the same spacing as you did with the K70. And I do kind of prefer 10 keyless keyboards because I never use a numpad anyway, and it means that you can have your hands closer together, which I find is a more comfortable position to be in. Um, but as well as being 10 keyless, Corsair also strips some features from the K70 that some people may not necessarily have been all that bothered about losing, especially when it comes to gaming on the go, to make the K65 a more affordable keyboard. So things like losing the LED backlighting, making some of the separate media keys part of the FN keys, losing the volume scroll width, etc. Um, but the K65 is available in gunmetal grey and is obviously still brushed aluminium, which does look really beautiful. And it comes with Cherry MX Red switches, which as I said when we're looking at the K95, are generally speaking supposedly the best for gaming on. Um, but with the keycaps, the lettering is pad printed on, which may wear off after a lot of use. The WA Steen arrow keys are grey and the space bar has the same texturing as with the K70. Um, but I'm going to use the keycap holder that came with the K70, seeing as the K65 and K95 don't come with one, or the sexy red 1-6 or WSD keys, just to show you the Cherry MX Red switches without the LED mounted to the top, because obviously this keyboard doesn't have the LED backlighting, and also so you can see the Cherry stabilisers. Um, but if we look at the back of the keyboard, you can see that we no longer have the USB pass-through, but we still have the polling switch, and we no longer have the thick attached USB cable, Instead, with the K65, we've got a separate mini USB to USB cable that still looks nice, um, and it's got blue connectors, but because it's um, kind of detached like this, it just makes it easier to transport, and that just plugs in there. But at the bottom of the keyboard, we've got four rubber feet and two stands. So moving on to the conclusion, even though this video has had quite an overview feel, I do want to kind of like make it a review and give you my final thoughts on these three keyboards. So starting with the K70, since that's the first one that I looked at and I imagine the most popular of the three, it is the only one of these three keyboards which you can get in different Cherry MX switch colours and just red, which is a massive bonus for me and I imagine for a lot of you guys too. 
Now onto whether I give it an award or not, kind of the market that the keyboard's targeted at does see a lot of releases of keyboards kind of around the same price but that have a lot more lighting options. And even though I know some people kind of see the lighting options, things like the reactive lighting and like the pulsating or breathing modes to be kind of gimmicky, I know there are obviously some people who really want those on their keyboards. I'm um, comparing the K70 to something like the Ducky Shine 3, which they're kind of similarly priced. Um, in terms of lighting options, the Shine 3 is like up here and the K70 is like down here. But then in other areas, for example appearance, I feel like the K70s up here while the Shine 3 is down here. So for me they're kind of at the same level just in different areas if you get what I mean. And if you came up to me and you were like, so I'm looking to get a mechanical keyboard with let's say Chemrex blue switches, want it to have AD backlighting and you know obviously look sexy, then the K70 would be on the list of keyboards that I'd recommend to you. So I'm going to give it the Sweet Award, which is my version of recommended. And even though there's actually nothing actually kind of wrong with it, stopping it from getting the Tasty Award, I just feel like for its money, it could have more lighting options. Um, so onto the K95, it's a keyboard designed for MMO players or really anyone who wants to own macros and it is a really amazing keyboard like it does what it says on the box whatever you ask of it you know it's what it does um but my kind of my issue with it I don't know if this is just me being kind of girly and wanting things to look pretty and match but you know for its price it's a 130 pound keyboard I don't see why it just doesn't have aluminium like all the way across because even though some lighting it looks cool some it just looks naff and you know you you bring your mate round you want to show off your like your epic gaming setup there's a 50% chance depending on your lighting that it could look like you've just hot glued a load of like macros at the end of the K70 it could look pretty naff um but I'm sure many of you, you know, like how it looks, so kind of putting appearance aside, because that doesn't affect the product's performance, um, the, key the keyboard is only £10 more than the K70, and it offers you loads more functions on top, so, you know, it's definitely going to get my sweet award too. Um, and then lastly we've got the K65, which has also been designed for gamers, obviously being the Vention series, but it is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum to the K95. Um, so when it comes to AD backlighting, for me it's always been like mandatory, like I don't like a keyboard if it doesn't have AD lighting, well that was the case, now not so much, now I don't mind if a keyboard doesn't have AD backlighting, like before I just wouldn't buy one, wouldn't, wouldn't like look, like give it a second chance, like or check and glance I suppose, but now you know it, it doesn't really bother me, um, but I can see a lot of people not even considering buying this keyboard because it doesn't have AD backlighting. And even though I can see why Corsair have done it, like they wanted to keep the price as low as possible because roughly about £70 at the moment, and obviously having AD backlighting would inevitably have driven it up. Um, it is, you know, if, if you get a mechanical keyboard, you could have it up for f up to like five years. And, you know, if not having AD um, lighting is something that's going to bother you even slightly, then I don't think you should compromise and I wouldn't recommend this keyboard to you but if you're not all that bothered about AD backlighting then putting that aside it's a really amazing keyboard apart from you know the lettering being pad printed I mean I got one specifically to use for my racing sim I don't know what says more about how great a product is or how much I like it than the fact that I'm choosing to use one myself and I've got others here that I could use instead um so it's definitely an amazing keyboard that I'm also going to give the Sweet Award to. And if it had AD backlighting, then it could possibly get the Tasty Award. So to summarise, there are three great keyboards that I'd buy with my own money, but they're all kind of just missing that special something. Um, but that was my review of Corsair's Vengeance K65, K70 and K95 mechanical keyboards. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and haven't already. And thanks for watching.